think about African American people. I think about my people. I'm here to tell you today that when Dr. King says injustice anywhere, well, it, it, that's not an exact quote. I had it in my head, but I was thinking about two quotes. Injustice anywhere can be a threat to justice everywhere. So I'm here to tell you today that we have to realize that we are in this all together. In this country, we are all in this together. If one of us is attacked, we all are attacked. So today is going to be an interesting message. This kind of message you might find on the 4th of July. But God put it in my spirit to talk about America today because so much is on the drawing board. So much is happening right now. So I want us to pay attention, close attention, because God has given me so much. I don't even know if I will be able to finish, but it'll give us an idea about what we should be doing and what we are doing and to ask ourselves, is that enough? Amen? I'm Apostle Dr. Gloria W. Wright, and you have tuned in to Dayspring International Ministries, a place where you can come and gather and be able to fellowship with everyone. And we ask also that you bring someone when you come, because we are an ecumenical ministry. We are non-denominational. We are not beholden to any denomination any group, but we are Christians, and we are Bible-believing ministry. I say ministry because I don't like to use the word church. People are turned off by the name or the word church. I've discovered that. 
So this is a ministry, a place of refuge, and a filling station for those who are wounded. But not just for those who are wounded, but for those who feel like they need to get away and to, to share with other ministries. I've heard people say that. And then I've heard people say, I can't leave my church, not one Sunday. I have to be there every Sunday. Well, we'll see. I hope I never feel that I have to be rooted and grounded one place and never leave. Because God is in you. God is in me. Amen? I want us today to remember this ministry in prayer. We are here at 3105 Washington Road here at East Point, Georgia. And we want you to look on our Facebook page, Dayspring International Ministries, or under Gloria W. Wright, the apostle and the CEO and founder of this ministry, and see the things that we're doing. And also here at WAIN TV studio, the message is recorded every Sunday. And we put it on our Facebook page. We'd like for you to share, share those messages with other people. I share them with people even in Africa, all over the world. We are to go and take the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we've been assigned to do. Let us go now and look at the word today. I invite your attention to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. We'd like to read verses 4, 5, and 6 for your hearing. And we'll be in the, contempor- uh, no, we'll be in the King James Version today. Amen? Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. And it reads on this wise. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. I found that verse of those verses to be very penetrating and really speak volumes about what is going on today in the United States and all over the world. We know that everyone is not a Christian, but I just don't believe that you shouldn't be Christ-like. Whether you are Buddhist, uh, Muslim, whatever you are, you should be Christ-like. Because every religion knows about Christ, Jesus the Christ. Some see him as a prophet and not as our Lord and Savior, but that's okay. What we need to understand is we need to respect everybody's religious persuasions, respect everybody's religious beliefs. We didn't say you have to believe them, but at least respect everybody because every one of us, is one of God's children. Amen? So I want to speak just for a few minutes on the subject, One Nation Under God. And I really thought of several topics for this message. The church is one foundation, or somebody ought to say something with all the things that are going on today. So I want you to pray with me as I give this message. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would be with me as you always are. Use me today, O God, to speak to your people all over the world. Bless every home that's represented and listening under the sound of my voice. Bless also, God, their needs. Whatever they stand in need of, I know you will supply their every need. Help them to believe that you have not forsaken them because you said you'd never leave us, nor would you forsake us. So we are standing today on your promises, O God. Bless the bereaved and those who are sick and shut in. I'd ask that you would be right now with Sister Geraldine, who is in Portland, Oregon. Be with Minister Alonzo Wilson and Minister Anderson, so many who are away from us today. Bless them, O God, in a special way, because we need everyone 
in this ministry to do those things God has assigned our hands to do. And, oh, God, don't forget about little old me. Bless me, oh, God, that I can persevere, that I can continue to stand. And we give praise for you, and we give praise for Sister Craig and the WAIN TV studio. Bless us all, for we are trying to do that which you called our hands to do. And we want you to know out there that if you're praying for us, there's nothing we cannot accomplish together. We ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen, amen, and amen. Now, this message it's going to be a little bit difficult to stay in one particular area because I really want it to be somebody ought to say something. I wanted it to be <clears throat> the church is one foundation. And so you'll see that from the scripture lesson, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, one nation under God encompasses all of this. The church is one foundation and Jesus Christ is her Lord, she is a new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. The Lord Jesus died for us, the body of Christ. We are beholden to do the work that will continue the spiritual legacy of Jesus Christ. He wanted us to go out into the dying world and to, to preach and to teach and to baptize. Well, if you don't do that, then you ought to at least be able to say that you are contributing by prayer or by finances to the ministries of your choice. I want you to know that when we think about the United States, we think about the fact that we are supposed to be united. And over the years, we have been the most affluent nation in the world, the free world. We, at the top of all, all throughout every continent, we led people. And what I'm afraid of is we may end up following people. God has made us a nation that will lead, that will help others. And so it is we are being tested right now. We've been challenged right now. Even though we know that <clears throat> we have the United States of America, we believe after this last election maybe we we're not as united as we thought because we seem to be divided right up the middle, the blue states and the red states. But how many know that if anybody attacks us, we may become lavender because we won't be red, we won't be blue. We are all in this together. So the songwriter says, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Now, Ray Charles sang this particular patriotic song. It is a beautiful song. And it is, it is sung at many of the Olympics and all kinds of competitions because it's supposed to bespeak who we are. We want you to understand something today in the, in the scripture. Paul says that Christ is the head of the church, Ephesians 5.23, his body of which he is the Savior. We, the body of Christ, must act and not react in times of trouble. Act, not react in times of trouble. That means we need to all be in prayer, praying for peace, praying for unity. The famous hymn of millions in Christian churches is the song, One one foundation, it was written, the church's one foundation was written by Samuel J. Stone. The church was called out to serve the children of God. We in this country, we are supposed to be a beacon of light and a beacon of hope. That's how I see it. So what I'm going to tell us today is 
we need to understand that during the 1800s, France gave us what we know as the Statue of Liberty. I did my research about this when I saw how much uh, people want to come to this country and how just in the last 24 hours people were uh, halted at the airports, couldn't come in because of what happened through the president's signatures. But I'm here to tell you that those are God's people. And we cannot neglect God's people. Or we have to do things decently and in order. We have to give fair warning. But God is going to handle all of that. This Statue of Liberty holds a golden torch in her right hand. A golden torch in her right hand, representing enlightenment and a tablet in her left hand. The tablet is engraved with the Roman, Roman numerals 1776, the year America was founded and the Declaration of Independence was written. If you look at that Statue of Liberty, it has a seven-pointed crown on her head, and the seven-pointed crown represents the continents of the world. And then if you look closer, you can see the broken chains and the shackles that peek out from under her robe on the base of the statue. It would remind people of liberty's triumph over oppression. We in this country, we don't believe in oppressing people. And we as American, African Americans, I should say, we had to fight for liberty. And we know what it's like to be discriminated against. We know what it's like to be turned around to be blocked from coming into a, 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 a building and to be blocked from an establishment. We know what it's like to say you cannot use the restroom. You cannot drink from this water fountain. We already know. And so we are more empathetic about people who have been rejected. And I understand that we have to protect our country, but at the same time, we don't have to make enemies because what I'm feeling in my spirit is an uneasiness where people all over the country are reacting to what has happened. And so when you say that you are going to have problems with Mexico, who is next door, and you're going to not really have any real commitment to Canada, who is above us and next door, and then we have all over the world people who have been depending on us they're falling out with us. If we're not in the United Nations, where you have all of the nations who used to depend on us, then where are we? Where are we going? What are we doing? This is no disrespect to the President of the United States because I know what it's like to be in leadership. We are to respect leadership, but at the same time, we know when leadership goes awry. And last night, the country was in chaos. God is not a God of chaos and confusion. So that has to be remedied. The full name of the Statue of Liberty is Liberty Enlightening the World. That Statue of Liberty is standing there been standing there since the 1800s. This Statue of Liberty is supposed to remind us of who we are and what we are all about. And the theme for this Statue of Liberty, the theme is reference to the gold fell, fell torch she holds aloft. I'm sorry, gold field. My eyes are playing tricks on me. I want you to understand that this was given to us as a gift because France believed in what we believed. But if we're going to alienate ourselves from France, Germany, and all the big countries of the world, how many know that if you are standing by yourself, 
you're going to need an ally at some point. Somebody needs to tell somebody that. We cannot live in this world alone, even though we want to be first. We don't have to practice to be first. We already were first. But when we find ourselves being in trouble with other nations and the other nations begin to say, I don't feel comfortable coming to America anymore, we've got a problem. Because this was supposed to be the place where everybody would love to come. We have to do something, people, and that is we need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer. I I'm reminded of a poem that is read often when people speak around the country. It was written by Martin Nyamalia. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And his poem opened my eyes to some things. His poem reads on this wise. He said, they came for the socialist, a prominent Protestant pastor who wrote about how they came. So I'm going to read how they came as he read it in his poem or as he wrote it in his poem. He says, first they came for the socialist. And I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist. And I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Hallelujah, Union, unionists. Then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. But then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak for me. Let me just say this. That reminded me of the position we seem to be going in. If we don't speak out for people who are less fortunate, if we don't speak up for those who are hungry, who are hurting, who are refugees, if we don't speak out for those people whose rights have been denied, then we, especially Africans, African Americans, we cannot have the memory that we had when we were having a problem. You see, in the civil rights movement, there were Jewish pastors. There were people who came from all over the world to help us. Many people don't know that. There were many demonstrators who were out there marching with Dr. King who came from all over the world. I'm not saying they all came with the right attitude, but they came and they put their lives in jeopardy. And there, there were some who were killed on our behalf. Let me just say this. When I talk about America the beautiful, when I talk about the fact that there were people who were going through a problem back during the Nazi days and nobody spoke up for them, today we are seeing that there are people who still want to come to this country. And yet, we're saying, by lists, those who are from certain countries will not be able to come in. I say, look at the passports and see who has been in trouble and don't let those people in. That's just like saying African Americans have done a whole lot of wrong, they've been in trouble, so we're not going to give them their rights anymore. Come on now. That we can't do. We cannot do human beings that way. God has put us here for a plan and for a purpose. We're supposed to be his eyes, his hands, his feet. I know his hands would not sign certain legislations. And then I question sometimes, and I'm still showing respect, I question sometimes those who are sitting in legislation, those who are sitting in Congress, those who are the senators. If you know that something's not right, just don't go along just to get along. I'm here to tell you that 
if you don't believe something, then why would you vote for that something? I am amazed at how things are going right now. Somebody ought to say something. Somebody ought to stand up and say, I'm not voting for this or I'm not voting for that because I don't believe in it. And not sit there like a knot on a log and say ditto, ditto to things that people are saying to them. Now, I'm not a rebel rouser, but I believe in speaking out against things that are wrong. Some things need to be adjusted, yes, but some things need to be adjusted fairly. If we're going to be America the beautiful, then we're going to have to love God's people and more importantly, love God so much that we will serve God's people. Here we are, one nation under God. I'll take it a step further. One nation under one God. Hello, somebody. I want us to know that we are God's people. And so we have to be one and one nation, that is, under one God, with liberty and with justice for all people. I don't know about you, but I looked at the Statue of Liberty in a different light. I pray that the Statue of Liberty is not just standing there just to be a tourist attraction. I pray that we will live up to what people believe about us as a country. We are supposed to be fair because God has shed his grace on us and crowned our good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. That is to four corners of the world. I want you to take a part in doing right by peoples all over the world. And the best way to do that is for us to join hands, literally and figuratively, join hands and hearts and be in prayer for not just our country, but for all countries, for all people, for all those babies who have been out there walking, trying to find a place to live with those wet, soaky diapers on. You know what it's like to be out without a bathroom, without food to eat. If you don't know, then if we don't speak up, we may end up in the same boat. We need to speak to those things that are wrong and uphold those things that are good. And everything that God says and God has done is good. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So yes, we are. One nation under God, but we have to act like it. Thank you, and may God bless you richly. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh.